morning, some of you. How are you guys doing this morning? It is good to see you. It is good to be with you. Merry Christmas. Oh, man, that is, that is a sound to make anybody's heart happy. It is good to, to be with you guys. It is good to see you. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Kyle, and I'm one of the pastors here. Um, as Aaron said just a second ago, if you're new here, if this is your first time here, we just want to say thank you for taking your Sunday morning to join us this morning, and we would love to meet you. We even have a gift for you at our Connect desk at the end of service. I'll be there. We'd love to meet you and talk with you and uh, share a little bit about our church or hear a little bit about what brought you here this morning. Uh, we're just glad that you've joined us today. So for those of you who are members and call this church home, it is good to see you. Uh, Those of you who are first-timers, those of you who got dragged here, I'm not going to make you raise your hand, but you can elbow your your partner who dragged you here. Um, Those who are here, maybe the once in a whileers, we're really happy you're here this morning as well. Uh, We're glad that you joined us on this Christmas Eve. So today, we are going to be uh, getting closer to wrapping up our Advent series where we've been turning our attention and our thoughts towards what Jesus did and why we celebrate this Christmas season. So we, we've been lighting the Advent wreath, so we lit the hope candle, where we put our hope in the light that is to come, that is in Jesus. Uh, we celebrated the peace that is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And we saw last week uh, that Jesus came to bring good news of great joy for all people. Uh, and so today we are turning our attention to love, the topic of love, so I figured the best way to learn about what love is is go to the experts. Um, and we went to four-year-olds and eight-year-olds. <laughs> a handful of years ago, researchers posed this question f- to four-year-olds and eight-year-olds that says, what does love mean? Here's where some of their answers. Chrissy, age six, says this. Love is when you go out to eat and give somebody most of your french fries without making them give you any of theirs. True love. Noel, age seven, says, love is when you tell a guy you like his shirt, then he wears it every day. <laughs> I, I, I've received many comments about the bow tie. This might come back more regularly. Uh, <laughs> Danny, age seven, says this, love is when mommy makes coffee for my daddy, and she takes a sip before giving it to him <laughs> to make sure the taste is okay. Aww. That's very sweet. Uh, Karen, age seven, says, when you love somebody, your eyelashes go up and down and little stars come out of you. (laughs) Rebecca, age eight, says, when my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over to paint her toenails anymore, so my grandfather does it for her all the time, even when his hands got arthritis too. That's love. Jessica, age seven, You really shouldn't say, I love you, unless you mean it. But if you mean it, you should say it a lot. People forget. And then lastly, Bobby, age five, says this. Love is what's in the room with you at Christmas if you stop opening presents and listen. So how would you answer the question of what does love mean? Today, we're going to be looking at a passage in the book of 1 John, which is the letter written by an apostle, a disciple, a close friend of Jesus who walked with him. In fact, John was the one who he writes about himself as the disciple in whom Jesus loved. So he knows about love. And he's going to answer the question for us, what is love and what is Christmas all about? Because believe it or not, I think the scriptures actually answer those questions for us of what is love and what is Christmas all about. And so uh, the main idea for us this morning is gonna be this. Is Christmas is proof that God loves us. Christmas is proof that God loves us, and we're gonna see it in two different ways in two verses. One, God presents himself, that's a sign and a showing of his love, and then we see God actually gives himself as proof and showing of his love. And so let me pray for us as we jump in. Father, we give you thanks for today and the Christmas season, the excitement, the buzz, And God, we also know uh, as many people who are excited to tear into presence tomorrow or spend time at a table with loved ones and friends in the next few days, we know there's others who might be dreading this season uh, over loss, over uncertainty. And so we pray that you would help us turn our attention and our minds to uh, what love is and what Christmas is about. And would we leave here this morning feeling deeply loved by you? We pray this all. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. So the Bible actually tells us 
that real love is not our love toward God or love towards one another or faithfulness to God or our faithfulness to one another, but God's love towards us and his faithfulness towards us. And so we actually see in 1 John 4, 9, that God presents himself to us to show us his love. And it says this in verse 9. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son to the world so that we might live through him. So the very first thing John says to us as we look at this is that the love of God was put on display, was made manifest, it appeared before us when he sent his only son into the world. If we think about the different ways that God has shown and exhibited his love throughout the scriptures, there's a lot of examples of it. Simply the fact that he created beautiful things for us to look at. This morning was, no, it was a perfect example of the sunrise that was coming up over the mountains, the orange sky, the clouds, the fog lifting, signs of beauty and God's love for us. We can read through the scriptures and see different stories of deliverance and God providing for his people's needs and, and meeting with his people and caring for his people. But the peak of God's love was what happened on that Christmas morning when God himself entered into the world. The way that John writes this, the word manifest or revealed refers to the idea it's a disclosure of something that has not yet previously been seen, or something that has been previously been hidden. So God's love comes out into the open and makes a public appearance in the form of Jesus. You see, Christmas reminds us that Jesus came to earth as an expression of God's love, and it was love in action. It was a choice that he made, unprovoked by anything that you and I ever did or could do. You see, it's one thing to talk about love. It's a whole other thing to show it, right? Painting toenails, sharing french fries, God entering into human history. You see, this, this passage alludes to the fact that Jesus existed even before he came into the world, meaning that he's this eternal God that has always existed. That God wasn't in need, God wasn't lonely, God didn't need a relationship with us, God existed in perfect community and harmony and love with himself. But he sent Jesus into the world on a mission full of brokenness and sin to show us his love for us. Elsewhere in the New Testament, we see that Jesus is actually the perfect image representation of God, that he embodies God's love, God's character, and is in fact himself God. And that's what makes Christmas so miraculous. The incarnation. God stepping in to human history. And notice how John even says it in there, that he was made manifest among us, alluding to the fact that this isn't just some folklore. This wasn't just some story. He walked side by side amongst this person. He saw him. He talked to him. He had relationship with him. He experienced God himself. And then in verse 9, he makes this statement, so that we might live through him. So God appears, he enters the scene, he's existent, he's real, he's close by, and then he came so that we might live through him. You see, what we celebrate on Christmas morning, the birth of our Savior, the birth of Jesus Christ, that sending was for a reason, so that you and I might find life in him. You see, God's love aims to bring life to humanity. Not just a spiritual one, but an abundant one, an eternal one. If you're joining us this morning and you're curious about what Christianity is all about, I want to let you know that it's not just simply to get you to stop being sinful and start doing things more morally appropriate. Christianity isn't about changing you from a non-religious person to a religious person. Person? Person? We're not simply out here to make a non-churchgoer become a churchgoer in 2024. Christianity, the reason why Jesus came was to give new life to people, people like you and I. You see, Jesus isn't just simply a fire insurance plan, a, a get out of jail free card. He came that we might have life with him, relationship with him. And so I wanna to submit to you today, this morning, if you're here and you feel like something's missing, that maybe something's lacking in your life, is it because you don't live this life that Christ has come to give you? Because a life with Jesus gives existence 
gives meaning, and gives a fullness of life. And so on that, that Christmas, when Mary gave birth to that baby, God enters into humanity. He appears. He manifests himself. He makes himself known so that you may have life. So he presents himself. But that's not all he does. He gives himself to us. And we see this in verse 10. In this love, not that we have loved God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. So two things out of this verse as we look at it and consider it for us today. Look at the order of love in which it describes where the initiating love comes from. Notice how John doesn't say, we loved God, so God has decided to love us in return, right? Is that what he says? That you have motivated and moved God to love you. No, that's not what it says at all. It says, even when you didn't love him, acknowledge him, worship him, adore him, just notice him, he still bestowed his love upon you. God loves us before we loved him. In fact, right now, I'm willing to bet that there's someone here that doesn't love God. In fact, you're just here because your auntie drags you and you're hoping to get some of that casserole later, right? You're hoping that there's maybe an extra present underneath the tree because you came to church with grandma or grandpa. But even if you don't love God currently right now, this passage is actually saying God loves you right now. Even while you are still running from him. Not acknowledging him. That he's loving you right now. And how do I know that? It's because of what this passage teaches us and shows us. Even if you want nothing to do with God, anything to do with God this morning, he is still loving you. He's loved you before you loved him. How do we know that? Because he sent his son. He came to deal with the separation between us and God. Now, in the time that John wrote this, wasn't too dissimilar to our time and place and culture and society and the fact that um, we often only give our love to people or things in whom we deem appropriate to be loved, right? Only things that are lovable. There are only certain things that are worthy of our love, we think. But what's amazing to me when we actually read through the scriptures and we consider Jesus' life, his ministry, his teachings, it shows us that God actually loves the unworthy, that God loves the unlovable. How do we know that? By what we've been looking at so far this morning. God appeared, God came to us, God sent his son for us. Not because we were lovable, not because we loved him, but because God is love. This love that God gives us is unconditional. It's not based upon anything that we've done. Jesus comes to earth, comes to us, and unveils God's heart for you and I. What further proof do we need that God loves us, that he would come to us that Christmas morning? But the Apostle John goes on to say there's one more thing that Jesus says that shows us the love of God. Verse 10, it says this. In this love, not that we have loved God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Now, you probably were thinking this morning, I'm going to wake up, go to church, I'm going to learn big technical theological terms, right? That's what you're all hoping to get this morning. We're like, we don't need that hark the herald angel sing, we don't need a holy night, we don't need silent night, we need theological terms. No amens? Okay, fine, I'm on my own here, okay? <laughs> so propitiation is just a big fancy theological world that talks about the turning away of God's wrath, the covering of our sins by an offering. And so what John is saying to us this morning as we think about God's love is that the cross, what Jesus would go on to do in his life later to bring forgiveness of sins, would be impossible with the, the incarnation. The incarnation of God being born, coming to us that Christmas morning, is in service to the cross. So what John is saying that Jesus had this intention from the moment that he showed up and was born that day, he knew he was going to make a way for us to be reunited with God. He was going to offer himself. He had intentionality of what he showed up to do that Christmas morning, knowing where he was going. I like to think when we, we talk about we're made in the image of God and we 
bear some of his characteristics. I think I have a little bit of that because when I go to a store, I have a list and I have intention to walk out with everything that I want, right? I'm not one of those meanders. I hate Christmas shopping. You will not see me browsing the aisles. I have a list. I want to know what aisles it's on because I'm in and out, right, fellas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you haven't done your shopping yet, brothers, you got some time, okay? <laughs> but we walk in Christmas stores or do the grocery store. You know when you get the list, you better go to the store and have everything on the list. You walk in with intentionality of what you're going in for and what you're going to do. That's exactly what Jesus was doing that Christmas morning. He came into this world knowing where he was going to show you his love and to bring you back to him. Jesus had this intentionality that he was born to go to the cross. He was born to die for you, to be the propitiation, the thing that takes away the sin, our rebellion. This is a gift of love. Jesus came to renew our broken relationships with God and with one another. He removes the offenses and covers them. John isn't the only one that writes of this in this New Testament. The Apostle Paul writes this in Romans 5. God shows his love for us that while we were, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even in the midst of your rebellion, even in the midst of your running, even in the midst of your sinfulness, God loved you sent his son for you, and Christ died for you to show you his love. John wrote in his gospel, Words of Jesus, where Jesus says this, greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. That's exactly what Jesus came to do for you. And so this idea of propitiation, it shows us the depths and the darkness of our sin meaning there's something within us that needs to be addressed. But it also shows us the love in which he's provided himself to turn away the wrath that is coming towards sin. How amazing is that to think about, that Christmas, when that infant was born, to show his love for you, he came to you, he gave his life for you, he laid everything down for you to show you his love. John Stott in his book, The Cross of Christ, says this. For the essence of sin is man substituting himself for God, while the essence of salvation is God substituting himself for man. Man asserts himself against God and puts himself where only God deserves to be. God sacrifices himself for man and puts himself where only man deserves to be. All that takes place, all that is made possible, by what Jesus comes to do on that Christmas morning and being born. Love has appeared in the manger. Love has come to you this morning. All this work, the work of love towards humanity, towards people, started that Christmas morning. So if you've ever asked yourself the question, does God love me, how would you answer that? Do you think God loves you? I think based upon what we've seen, even just in those two verses, we can say it with a resounding yes. John says it twice in those two verses, that he sent his son for you. Do you believe that? That Christ was born, sent for you, to show you God's love. Look at what he did for us. He offered his life. He came towards the people who would reject him. And he still loved us. Jesus has laid down his life for us. The proof is there. God has held nothing back for you this morning. Christmas is absolutely proof that God loves us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the Christmas morning, for the opportunity to gather, to sing songs and be reminded of the rescue mission that Jesus went on to save us.
So Father, I pray right now that regardless of where we may be, where we have been, or where we're going later today, even for this brief moment in time, you would help us to believe and truly receive the truth that you love us. The proof is in the manger and the proof is on the cross. Help us to believe it this morning. Father, we offer you this morning and this, this holiday day and tomorrow. And we ask that you would help us to believe that you love us. And may we be forever grateful that we're known by you and loved by you. We pray this in Jesus' name. All God's people said,